Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review a fingerprint and RFID lock from VLock that I received free of charge for this review video and um, this is the first time I'm looking at any of these smart locks. I'm a little bit hesitant to say the smart feature because uh, uh, I mean this lock works without any smart features as it is but then it has this additional functionality that of course you can you know open it from your phone and then you can uh, view the lock history from your phone but uh, it doesn't have some of the you know fancier features that I have seen on advertisement for other locks as in like it would detect when you're approaching the lock and it would unlock automatically or you can like uh, geo fancy location for the lock to autom uh, unlock automatically so i think it's a very nice lock but uh, probably the um, you know the app features and the smart features are not as you know sharp and good as i have seen for other models I've installed this lock in the door which is between my garage and my house. It's a little bit scruffy door so um, this is why the, you know, the surroundings are not really nice and perfect. But uh, this is the door I wanted to test this new lock on. VLock has a couple of products in their lineup. Uh, well actually it's, it's mainly two different products or two different locks. Uh, both of them looks very really similar. The difference is that on the interface one of them has a fingerprint sensor just like mine and also it can read RFID tags and the other one has a small keypad and plus the RFID tags and they are available in the European log body version, uh, the European like cylinder version and also there is a version available for the US as well for both models. And so these are the four different products, so two variants of the interface and two variants of the log body. And then there is additionally a Wi-Fi box, which is like a small box which sits close to the lock because the lock communicates over Bluetooth. And that Wi-Fi box uh, creates the communication between Bluetooth and your wireless network. So when you just buy the lock, you can use it on your phone as long as you are you know, close to the lock itself. But as, so, as soon as you, you know, walk to the other parts of your house or you walk away, then you won't be able to access your lock and won't be able to unlock it. So for that, you need to buy the Wi-Fi box. So you already seen some close-up shots of this lock and I want to just uh, show you close, uh, you know, how it works. So there is the, this is the, you know, the other side of the door where you have the fingerprint sensor and the button and also where you can scan your RFID tag, which is like this one. So they provide three of these RFID tags with the lock. And on the inside there is a, uh, just a general knob. And as you can see, compared to the skinny handle that I, well, that I have for this door, but I think these are more or less typical for European doors. This is quite a chunky beast. And uh, the other thing which I had issue with this particular door is the door frame is fairly close to the door. So this knob actually clears this door frame, but as I open it, it just basically swings in a way. So I had to chip a little bit off from this door frame. Again, I was okay to do this in my garage door, I'm not sure if I would be, you know, very happy to do this on my front door. So even though this cylinder is tapered, it still sort of like swings in the way. So we just had to bit, you know, get a piece of this off from the door frame. Um, luckily it is wood and not metal. So now you can see some footage how the sort of the inside and the outside thing works. So the inside knob is always engaged with the lock body, so you can always lock the door or unlock the door with it and with the outside unit obviously it spins freely and then when you scan your uh, fingerprint or you scan your RFID and if it's accepted then there is like a small servo inside which just locks the um, the outer cylinder so then you can use it but basically you can just turn it to unlock your door or lock your door and then if you just leave it for 10 seconds then it's going to disengage again and it's going to be a freely spinning cylinder as well so then well then it's not going to work as an op so your door stays shut and i'm not really sure if there is any particular purpose for this uh, spinning cylinder other than obviously when it's you know not locked and I guess if you want to protect this from the elements, maybe you can just turn it down like this whenever you are not using it. So, you know, the sun or the rain is just going to hit this metal surface instead of the fingerprint scanner or the keypads. 
So maybe that's also the intended purpose. Definitely what I would say about this whole user interface is it is really, really quick. So you always have to press the button that sort of wakes up the device. I guess this is uh, required in order to conserve battery, but you press it and you put your finger and then now it's red. So the whole fingerprint scanner thingy is really, really fast. So I really like that one. And um, so it is really easy to get in. I mean, you know, of course, once you have a correct fingerprint and everything. So it's quick. And when I scan my fingerprint, it asks me to put my finger in different positions, like how your phone asks you to, you know, move your finger around. So you don't have to be very, very exact how you put the finger in. So I think it's a, you know, a really good fingerprint sensor and it works great. And it's pretty much the same with the, you know, the, sent, the RFID tag. You just put on top of the, the fingerprint scanner, so sort of like in the, on the top and it on locks and then again you wait for 10 seconds and it's just going to release the the handle and then you know it's free spinning again so it's very easy to operate and this is why I said that as a lock itself I think it's it get it's great it looks to be you know a fairly sturdy construction obviously I'm not a locksmith so I won't be able to tell how you know sturdy the the, uh, the design is, if it's easy for you know lock pickers or anything like that. But it definitely looks like a very you know well built uh, lock body and you know all the bits and pieces that come with it. In terms of the entire package, the lock comes in a really you know professionally presented box. It's very nicely printed and everything. And within the package, you get a well obviously the lock itself, which Everything is sort of assembled, so it has the, you know, the cylindrical lock body, it has this outside element where you can, you know, the fingerprint scanner and everything. And on the inside there is just a big knob that you have seen previously. So that's it. And then besides that there is a small box which contains a couple of different parts. So uh, while well, besides the box you get the free RFID tags and you also get allen key a couple of spare screws and also like a small uh, phillips head screwdriver which you would need to replace the battery but that's it maybe one note on the rfid tags so i have a couple of very simple rfid tags that i used in my um, I have some access control panels where I can put pins and scan RFID tags. So those use the very simple key fob type RFID tags. And this is something different because I cannot use these. It doesn't get recognized uh, on those readers. So probably it's using a different encryption or a different frequency. Uh, and it's probably more secure than those very simple RFID tags, which you can easily copy and you can get blank cards for this. So probably these are... I don't know, hardwired the code in them. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage on the installation of this lock because the original lock which was in this door, well, it was broken because, well, I guess it was broken only because I lost the keys. So I had to call a, a locksmith to replace it. And um, so he, uh, he removed the old lock body, he put the new one in and I didn't film him, you know, doing all this work. But I can show you how it's uh, done. But before we get to the installation, there are two things that we need to do first. First is replace the battery and the other one is to change, well, uh, to link it to your application. Because I think it's easier when you can do it on your desk um, instead of when it's already installed. So first of all, you have to use the provided Allen key and then unscrew a small uh, set screw which is on the side on the body where you have the fingerprint scanner so the outside unit and then you can remove this uh, metal sleeve and once you have removed the metal sleeve then there is a small door here that you can well basically this is just a rubber uh, thingy and when you uh, the sleeve is removed then you have access to the battery compartment which is under this flap so you put the three AA batteries in so there is going to be some polarity printed inside and once the batteries are in you can just screw in this uh, screw which you can see here and that is all there it takes to install and of course you put, put this metal sleeve back in and you tighten the set screw and that's it oh in order to get this sleeve out you have to unscrew the metal the set screw completely because otherwise it's just going to block it and also i would like to mention the 
the fact that there is a micro USB port here, which I don't think that you can see, but there is a micro USB port there. And that is the backup power supply. So in case the battery runs completely flat and you won't be able to operate this door, then you can just unclip this uh, uh, flap and then you can use a power bank to power the lock using the micro USB connection and then you would be able to unlock it from your application. So this is sort of like a backup method if the battery dies. Let's say if you are installed it in a property which you don't really visit and then you don't realize that the battery runs flat. And then normally if everything is, you know, if the battery is installed, then you just replace this uh, rubber top and you just have to, you know, figure out the way how to put it into all the holes, the uh, these things, the, you know, the micro USB and the other two holes. So it seats nicely. So now that you have installed the battery, I think the next best thing to do is to actually register the device on your lock application. And uh, when you open the documentation, it gives go it's going to give you a QR code to download the app. But that QR code takes to VLOC's website where you can download, well, at least for Android, you can download the, uh, the, the installation files. But actually this VLOC app is also available on the App Store, sorry, the, yeah, the Google Store. So I wouldn't recommend downloading the APK. You just go to your Play Store and you download it. And probably it's the same process for iOS as well. So when you uh, install the app, obviously you have to create an account, you specify your email address and phone number. Well, actually you have to provide your phone number. The app is going to send a code to your phone in text message that you have to enter into the application. So there is like this extra second two-factor authentication in the registration. And then once you get into the application, there's going to be a button to add a new lock, which uh, you can do from the main menu as well, if you go to the device list, or if you can just click here, the add lock. And now we obviously want to add a lock. And uh, uh, so when you do that, then the uh, screen is going to say that, do you want to scan a QR code? And there will be a QR code stuck on here, which, well, I have removed because I installed the lock. And of course, I didn't want this QR code to be visible on the, uh, on the recording. So you click OK, and then you can scan the QR code, which is going to be on your lock. Well, obviously, this is not wor working here. And once you have done that, you need a second step which, in which you have to provide the ID which is on the lock. And you can see this in, in the information screen. So this is in the inside cylinder. So this is why I said that you should really do the registration process first because once you have installed the cylinder inside the lock, you won't be able to see the ID unless you take a picture of it or note it down. So you put the, your lock ID and then you can just click on the tab bind lock uh, button and then your lock is going to be added to your application. And then once you have that, you have done all the soft sites, so now you can physically install the lock in your door. And in order to do that, well, we have to disassemble this lock again. So you take your Allen screw at, again and now you unscrew the set screw which is on the inside side so it's on the knob and then again you un well you don't have to unscrew it all the way you just have to loosen it and you can you can remove the entire knob from the lock body and then basically that will allow you to insert the lock body from the outside into your door lock and of course then you um, secure the the lock body with the screw that you can screw in you can see the instructions on the side it's in the documentation and by the way, I haven't mentioned that the documentation comes in the five main European languages and all the, the languages are in a different leaflet. So you screw it in and then you can just replace the knob and there are a, a number of points in this, um, uh, you know, the main metal shaft. So if your door is, you know, thicker or thinner, you can adjust the knob to be in the right position. So, you know, it fits your physical dimension of the door and there is also a set screw on the outer part as well so the outer cylinder and um, it's the same set screw that we have unscrewed to get into the you know battery compartment but in this uh, uh, but again what you do now is you remove the set screw and then you remove the metal sleeve and there is a second screw hole next to it and then again you put the same allen key in you will find the there is an allen key probably like, 
I don't know, five, six millimeters inside that hole, you will be able to find it with the Allen key and you just loosen it up. And then that will allow you to slide the entire cylinder in and out slightly. So again, this is how you can adjust the, the size of the sort of the outside unit to your door face. So again, you just adjust it, make sure it doesn't bind, and then you set uh, the tighten the screw again. You put back the metal sleeve and then use the set screw to secure it. And with that, your door should be installed. I'm sorry I have to freehand this part a little bit because it is really difficult to, you know, get a recording of the screen which you can see above. Uh, you won't be able to read the entire screen, but I just wanted to show you how it works because before I get to the whole application part I just want to show you that you can actually do everything that you need to do like administration creating new or scanning new fingerprints and scanning new RFID tags on the device as well So you, that's why I said if you don't want to use the app if you don't want to use the, uh, the smart features then you know this is just a you know a good fingerprint and RFID lock as well. So you just have to hold, press and hold this button for three seconds, and then you see the menu. So now I'm inside and I can see the screen. And again, it is really difficult to read, but it says please aut authenticate. Oops. Okay, so I was too uh, too slow. So when you scan your first fingerprint, it actually also asks you to select your admin fingerprint. So I just um, scan my same finger. So this is my admin's fingerprint. So when I click uh, or press for five seconds, then it says that I need to authenticate myself. So I, I just uh, scan my, that's basically my admin fingerprint. And then now it says that it's accepting the fingerprint. Well, actually what happens now is it accepted my fingerprint and the first menu item is to scan a new fingerprint. Uh, and the way you accept a menu item is just basically not doing anything. And because I was uh, speaking, it has gone into the scan new fingerprint menu immediately. So if I want to scan a new uh, fingerprint, I can just, again, I have to do the whole thing again. So long press, it now asks for authentication. Okay, this is accepted. So the first menu is add fingerprint and now I can add a second finger and it asks me to move the, my finger and now it says that this is a new user and then it says that this is fingerprint number two. And if I don't do anything, then it just going to exit out of the menu. So that's it. And now, oh. And now I was able to unlock it and it was saying on the screen fingerprint number two because my index finger was fi uh, fingerprint number one and this is now fingerprint number two. So this is how you can register a new fingerprint. And again, the process is very similar to how you register a RFID card, how you can delete a fingerprint. And there are a couple of different options here that you can access from here, like, you know, factory reset or delete all the fingerprints or I think you can uh, disable the beeping as well and you can change the language between English, German and Chinese. So there are a couple of options which are clearly labeled on the documentation itself. But again, uh, you press for five seconds, then you scan your admin fingerprint and then you press the button in order to advance in the menu. So it's going to see you on the very small screen. So if you uh, don't read small text and make sure that you have your eyeglasses ready. So you, you keep pressing the button until you get to the menu that you want to use and then you just leave there and after a, a two or three seconds it will actually enter into that menu and it will show you the next thing that you need to do. You know, scan your fingerprints, scan your RFID tag or I guess if you want to delete something that maybe you just have to press the button again for, um, for a long time in order to confirm deletion, something like that. But um, it's fairly self-explanatory because everything is going to be shown on the small LCD screen just above the fingerprint scanner. So I think now I can just talk about the, the app. So we have a couple of different things here. Um, so obviously you have the main button here on the lower side which says you can just uh, you know, open the door and now the door is open. So you can see that it took a couple of seconds for it to connect to the door and then open it and yeah, it's done it. And now it has locked the door back in. Oh, sorry, I mean, you know, the, the knob is no longer engaged. Uh, so it's, uh, 
uh, it's not well it's unlocked itself again so let me go through the menu oh uh, by the way if you are unsure about what each of the menu does then you can click on the small question mark and you have an online help which is uh, useful but to be honest i did not understand most of well all of it and i still have a couple of um, questions how you do something so first of all you have an authorization management and within this authorization management you are um, you can see that who is the main user of this lock and you can create additional users so you need a you know a phone number which is the the basically the account number and you can add visitors or administrators to this lock you can even limit them how many times they can open or how long they have access to this lock so if you have multiple users running, running vlock you can just give uh, temporary um, permission to other users and you also have general users and what you can do here is you can basically create basically just names so you can see that i can create a name and i can assign the uh, the fingerprint and the card to these uh, to these names so you can, um, i've shown you when i was scanning my thumb then the you know the device was saying that this is fingerprint number 2 so what i have done is i have assigned the i think it's this one yeah and no it's john so i've assigned uh, uh, John to fingerprint number one and I have assigned Jerry to uh, the card number one so this is um, basically how I assign names instead of just fingerprint one and card number one or two and then when we look at the lock history you will see these names so this is just gives you a little bit more help to identify the various finger uh, sorry the fingers and uh, fingerprints and the various uh, RFID cards you cannot add a fingerprint to this lock uh, using the app because well after all you still have to scan your fingers so I guess they didn't add this functionality in the app because you have to walk up to the lock anyway but you can add a card because when you want to add a card uh, well you can set validity or you can set it to any time what you would do is the uh, the camera turns on because on the RFID tag there is a QR code so you read the QR code and this is how you you know scan a new RFID tag into the application and you assign it to a lock and of course you can do it on the lock itself and then you can just scan it so you can decide which one is easier you can also delete a card but again you just have to provide the the number of the card and you can also delete all the fingerprints or just individual fingerprints again you just have to know which what is the number of the fingerprint as you have to know what is the number of the card that you want to delete now you have this lock pin which I couldn't really figure out how to use and I even asked the seller and I didn't get a fairly useful answer so I guess maybe you can read it one what's on the screen but um, uh, or maybe this is only useful for the pin versions but um, yeah I just uh, skipped over this to be honest the next is the the history and the lock history from these uh, devices so first of all you can click on this sync record which is going to just uh, download the lock history from the device to the phone and i'm guessing what is happening is that the phone is is uploading all this information to the cloud because when i click on the unlock history i have to wait before well i have to wait until this information is then retrieved from the cloud and um, this is one of my pain points with this application because uh, as you can see it takes some time to get this and even though it's uh, you know i'm right next to the lock and i'm not using the wi-fi box and i have downloaded this information to the phone anyway i don't quite understand why i have to read it from the server again I guess it's useful because if I'm not in the vicinity of the lock, I can still get the, you know, the last update from the server. But if this information is downloaded in the, into my phone, it would be in my phone anyway. So I don't really see the point and it just slows the things down. So, so I think they should, you know, update the application that if you are not using the Wi-Fi box, you are just communicating via Bluetooth, then it just should store the data on the phone and, and then retrieve it from the phone and not use the cloud at all. 
And here you can see the history. And as you can see here now, because I named my fingerprints to, you know, J John and the RFID card to Jerry, now I can see names here in the history. On the top, I have a couple of items that have the date stamp of uh, 2080. And I have no idea how I can remove these. I think these were probably fingerprint scans um, before the, the time of the lock was synced to the phone time. Uh, so maybe this is the default time that the, the lock comes with, which is a little bit unfortunate because these uh, log items don't seem to expire because obviously they have the newer state. So it's always on the top of the, the log. And I couldn't really find a way to clear the log but I was getting, I was given the information that it can be deleted. And I also wanted to see if I can see my new fingerprint, which I'm not seeing for some reason, although, so today is, I can see the, the latest one. So this one, this item here. So that's when I opened it from the phone, from the application, but I'm not seeing the, uh, the one below where I use my thumb. Maybe I did not use the thumb. So maybe I can just do that because that is not, yeah. So now it says um, linked, so unlocked with fingerprint two. And if I sync, hopefully it pulls the data quick enough. It always says 10. I'm not really sure why. I'm pretty sure it's more than 10 now. Maybe it's only getting the latest 10. But anyway, I'm expecting to show a fingerprint which, does, which is not assigned to a name because I haven't assigned it to a name. Uh, and, oh yeah, I can see, you see? ID number two, so fingerprint number two. So this is my new fingerprint which I haven't assigned to any uh, general user, so it, it doesn't show a name here. But that's the unlock history. It's useful um, because, well, you can see who is going in and out of your home. Probably the only thing I'm missing here is it doesn't show the uh, unsuccessful authorizations. So if somebody's just, you know, pressing the button and then scanning some random fingers, that is not shown here. You also have the option here to sync the phone time to the device. So this is what I should have done right in the beginning, but I think I started scanning my fingers and I'm messing around with it even before I press this button. So this is why I have all the logs from 2018. And you can factor reset the whole thing, which I don't want to do. And then you have this help as well, which just opens a help page. And also you have a bell icon here, which shows some, uh, some messages. And uh, I read in the documentation that this is how you would uh, receive a message if uh, your batteries are running low. So you should know that uh, you need to replace the batteries. But again, if you are not using the Wi-Fi box, this is just a standalone lock and you install in a location that you don't visit so often, obviously your phone is not going to get the information that the battery is running low. So this is why you have to be careful about that. So the, the quoted lifetime of the free AAA batteries is uh, eight months for a fingerprint scanner. And of course that varies based on how many times you use it and I guess maybe even you know, like temperature and, and other things. So if you are not around your lock for an extended period of time, maybe just make sure that you bring a power bank with a micro USB cable. And, and that's pretty much it. And there is also this button here on the, on the lower left, which says front and USB. And I think this has to do something with, you know, when you have to use the USB button, uh, sorry, the USB connection to jumpstart the lock and unlock it. But I'm not really sure why you need a separate button for that. Maybe, you know, if you connect the USB, it only works if you switch it into this mode and then you just press the big button on the middle, something like that. Again, I got it at a couple of weeks ago so I haven't gotten that part where the battery is uh, running low and also you have this Wi-Fi box here which uh, uh, I guess this is how you can add a gateway to the to the lock and um, but to be honest that's pretty much it there are a couple of things here on the main menu so you can see that you can add it to Alexa and then you know the Google Assistant integration is coming uh, soon so I guess if you sync it with Alexa with your Alexa account then you can do with additional integration but because it doesn't have Google Home 
I can't, you know, ask Google Home to unlock my door or anything like that. And um, so now I can only use this application and, and because I'm not using the Wi-Fi box, the application is only good when I'm near the, uh, the door anyway. So I don't, this is why I don't think it's that useful. And you have a couple of other things here, so you can upgrade your lock. And uh, there was one more thing here. I think it's probably, it was in the settings. Yeah, you can change the language and um, different themes of the, of the UI. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And the, you know, the guys at Vlog has a WhatsApp account as well. So if you don't like emails, you can just uh, WhatsApp them and ask for help. So I think that would be the review of this uh, V-Lock, fingerprint scanner and RFID lock. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.